In order to understand membrane transport, we actually have to understand the concept of the electrochemical gradient. So what exactly is the electrochemical gradient and how can we actually quantify? So how can we measure mathematically what the electrochemical gradient is? So electrochemical gradient is actually a concept that combines two different ideas. So we have the concentration gradient and the electrical gradient. They're combined to form the electrochemical gradient. So Let's begin by discussing what the concentration gradient is. So let's suppose we have two different boxes and these boxes are separated by a barrier and that barrier doesn't allow the movement of anything across the two boxes. So what we do is box number two is left empty, but into box number one, let's imagine that we place a localized bundle of energy. So we have lots of energy in box one, no energy in box two and when we separate or when we actually remove that barrier what begins to happen well according to the law of entropy what begins to happen is that bundle of energy the localized amount of energy in box one will begin to move or distribute itself into box two and so the energy will move from a high amount to a low amount until we reach equilibrium, until the two boxes have the same and equal amount of energy. So this is what the law of entropy tells us. So according to the law of entropy, a localized region of energy will try to distribute itself over a larger region of space if actually given the chance to. So if given the chance to means we actually remove that barrier between the two boxes. Now, this is actually exactly what the concentration gradient is. And to see what we mean, let's imagine the following thought experiment. So once again, we have the two boxes. So we have box one, box two separated by that barrier. And instead of putting these, this idea of energy, we place actual molecules. So we place a bunch of molecules into one box and we have no molecules in the second box. And as soon as we remove that barrier, what begins to take place? Well, basically, on, in, in box one, we have all these molecules. And so, because each molecule carries a certain amount of energy, for instance, kinetic energy, if we sum up all the energy of the molecules in box one, the total energy in box one will be greater than the energy in box two, because in box two, if we have no molecules, we have no energy. And so what begins to happen is these molecules in box one will begin to move into box two because as they move, each one carries its own amount of energy. And this movement will continue to take place until the two boxes have the same and equal number of molecules. That is, they have the same amount of energy. And so we're assuming the molecules are exactly the same. So each molecule carries the same amount of energy. So, for instance, if in box one we begin with 100 molecules and in box two we have none, eventually we'll have 50-50 and so the amount of energy in the two boxes will be exactly the same. And so this is exactly what the concentration gradient is. So let's suppose instead of having our two boxes and the barrier, we have this semi-permeable membrane. So box one is, let's say, this side of our membrane and box two is the other side. So let's suppose we have very few molecules on this side and many molecules on the other side. So let's say we're looking at uncharged molecules, for instance, these nonpolar uncharged oxygen molecules. So what we have is an unequal distribution of these molecules. And because each one carries energy, we have an unequal distribution of energy. And based on the law of entropy, what begins to take place is these molecules begin to move naturally from a higher concentration, from a higher amount of energy to a lower concentration to a lower amount of energy and they will continue to move until the two sides have the same number of molecules. That is, they have the same amount of energy. So this is what the concentration gradient is. So the concentration gradient basically exists whenever we have an unequal distribution of these molecules. And as each one of these molecules moves across the cell membrane, it carries a certain amount of energy. And so the energy goes from one side to the other side. It's basically released 
from one side to the other side. Now, the next question is, how can we actually quantify or mathematically measure this amount of energy? So the question is, how can we describe how much energy is actually released when a molecule actually moves from the higher concentration to the lower concentration or vice versa? How can we calculate how much energy we actually have to input, give a molecule to move it from a low concentration to a high concentration because we know molecules spontaneously move from the high to the low concentration but to move the molecule from the low to the high we actually have to actively move that molecule we have to input a certain amount of energy so let's suppose we have the following phospholipid bilayer membrane so we have side one and side two and let's say the concentration of the molecule on side one is m1 and the concentration of the molecule on side two is m2 so basically from basic chemistry we know that to calculate the number of uh to calculate the amount of energy free energy that must be given to a molecule to move that molecule from side one to side two the equation that we have to use is this equation here so this is the same equation that you use in basic general chemistry so this equation basically tells us that the amount of free energy that must be inputted or in some cases is released when we move a molecule from concentration M1 side 1 to concentration M2 side 2 is given by this product. So R is the gas constant, T is the temperature in Kelvin, and natural log of the concentration M2 to M1. So we see that the free energy, delta G, is the amount of energy that must be transferred to the molecule to move it from side 1 to side 2. So let's actually discuss what the meaning of delta G is. So what happens if delta G is 0? Well, if delta G is 0, what that means is because R cannot be zero and because we cannot have an absolute temperature of zero that essentially doesn't exist, what that means is this is zero only when this ratio is equal to one. So what that means is the delta G is zero if the concentration on this side one is equal to the concentration on this side, side two. And remember, if the two concentrations are equal, the two energy sides are equal and the difference in energy is zero. And that's exactly why delta G will be zero in that particular case. In this case, we have reached equilibrium and the molecules will not be moving from either side. Now, what if the delta G is positive? So, if the delta G is positive, what that means is we actually have to input energy. We have to do work on the molecule to move it from side one, where the concentration is M1, to side two, where the concentration is M2. And if we actually have to apply energy, input energy, what that means is the process is essentially an active process. And this is an example of when active transport will actually take place because at this moment in time, we're going to be moving these molecules against the concentration gradient from a lower concentration to a higher concentration. So if delta G is positive, the molecule will not move spontaneously and energy must be inputted to move that molecule against that concentration gradient from a low energy to a high energy, from a low concentration to a high concentration. But if the delta G is negative, what that means is the molecule will move spontaneously because what it's doing is it's moving down its concentration gradient from a high to a low concentration like we have in this particular case. So if the delta G is zero, uh, if the delta G is negative, this is basically what we have. So this is side one, this is side two, and we know from the law of entropy, these molecules will begin to move spontaneously this way as they move. Each one releases a certain amount of energy to the other side. And that's why we have a negative delta uh, G. And so in this particular case, the type of transport will be 
passive transport because we won't have to move those molecules against their concentration gradient. So in the case of a nonpolar molecule, this will be simple diffusion. So it will simply move across that membrane to the other side. So if delta G is negative, the molecule will move spontaneously and this will release energy. Now to demonstrate what we mean by that, let's take a look at a specific example. So let's suppose we're at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So this is our membrane. This is, let's say, side one, the concentration of 0.1. This is side two, the concentration is, let's say, 0 0.0001. So before we even calculate what this uh, value will be, let's think about this logically. So we have a high concentration on this side, a low concentration on this side, and so what that means is, if given the chance to, the molecules on this side will tend to distribute themselves onto the other side, and so they will move spontaneously without the input of energy onto the other side. And so what that means is delta G must be negative. So let's actually make sure the delta G is negative. So delta G is equal to, so we have our gas constant, 8.315 times 10 to negative 3 kilojoules per mole times Kelvin, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin, so 273 plus 25, 298 Kelvin, multiplied by a natural log of this ratio to this ratio. So this ratio is less than 1, that means natural log of a number less than 1 is negative, and so this entire quantity will be negative, and it's equal to about negative 17,116.5 kilojoules per mole. And so what that means is this process will take place spontaneously, so it will be a passive process. It will not require any energy. Now let's move on, uh, let's move on to the concept of electrical gradient. So just like we have concentration gradient, and concentration gradient is a result of an unequal distribution of concentration of these molecules between the two sides. The uh, electrical gradient is basically the unequal distribution of charge along the two sides because remember many molecules and ions inside our body basically carry charge. So many atoms and molecules have a net charge and what that means is the unequal distribution of the charge between the two sides of the membrane will basically create this electrical gradient. And in physics, what the electrical gradient is, it's simply the electrical potential difference, the voltage difference between the two sides of the membrane. So, when a, when a cell is basically resting, we know that the inside of the cell is more negative than on the outside. And so the inside shown here is negatively charged and the outside has the same amount of charge, but it's opposite inside. And so from physics, we know whenever we have two opposite charges, and let's assume that these leaflets of the membrane are basically parallel. What that means in physics is we're going to have these electric field lines that will begin on the positive side and will travel directly to the negative side. Now, if we take a positive charge and we place it onto this electric field line, that positive charge will move from the positive side to the negative side. So a positive charge always moves along the same direction along that electric field line shown with this blue arrow. Now, on the other hand, if we take a negative charge, the negative charge will move in the opposite direction, but also along this electric field line. So a positive charge moves this way, a negative charge moves this way. But in this lecture, we're only going to focus on positive charges. Now, the question is, how exactly can we quantify or measure the amount of energy that exists across the membrane as a result of this electric potential difference, as a result of this electrical gradient? Well, basically, this is the equation that we have to use. Now, where does the equation actually come from? Well, if you studied physics, you've probably seen this equation. So work is equal to the charge multiplied by the potential, so voltage difference. And so in physics, what this tells us is we have to, 
<coughs> it tells us that if we take the product of the charge and the voltage difference along which that charge moves, that gives us the amount of work that we have to do on that charge. And this is the amount of energy that is transferred onto that charge. And so this equation is exactly the same. Where delta G is the work, this is the same quantity here, and Z times F is simply the charge that is moving along that membrane. Now, if you're not familiar with this equation and you studied chemistry, you know that in chemistry, the equation that you see that is equivalent to this is basically this equation right here. So we have uh, N multiplied by F multiplied by E. And usually we have this little symbol here. And so this is the same equation as this, where this is basically the voltage difference between the two sides, the two points. F is Faraday's constant and N is basically that number that if you multiply n by f that gives us the total amount of charge that moves along the, um, along that particular uh, that 